Okay, structural adaptations standard 5.2. Okay, the first word we need to define is structural adaptations. Structural adaptations are inherited traits of the body structure or physical appearance. Okay, that promotes an organism's ability to survive in a certain environment. The next word that we need to define is natural selection. Natural selection is an organisms is when organisms, excuse me, that are best suited for an environment that survive and go on to reproduce. So natural selection is all the organisms that's best suited for an environment will be the ones that survive and produce. Those that are not best suited, what do they do? They will die. Okay? All right. So now we're going to go down to the bottom and we're actually going to talk about some specific um, adaptations. So in underneath the where you see tundra, what you need to put here is that it is cold and dry in that big box to the left. Okay, the first adaptation here, in the adaptation box here, we're going to talk about these penguins blubber. Okay, in the second box, the function of blubber, okay, is for warmth. All right. Moving on down, you need to, the adaptation here, and I want you to identify this, is it's a musk ox, and it actually has two layers of fur, okay? And of course, the function of that adaptation is for warmth as well, okay? Moving on, and these are all adaptations that you can see in the tundra. All right, here, this is a, um, you need to write white fur, all right, or hair, depending upon what animal it is, and it is camouflage. Okay, is camouflage. And as you can see, it uh, blends in very well with the snow behind it. Okay, now on the next two boxes, the first box I want you to put flowering plants produce flowers if I can type correctly, sorry. Okay, and on the second box, the function of that adaptation is that the pollination process, hold on, I've got an extra box here. Let me delete that. Maybe. There we go. Sorry about that. The pollination process needs to happen in a short growing season. Remember, we're talking about the tundra here. You only have very, 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 like maybe what you would consider like a month and a half of tundra summer where everything kind of melts and defrosts. So those flowers have to be very quick to bloom so that they can uh, pollinate and go on to uh, become fertilized. Okay, something else, and you can see in this plant, is small leaf structure. All right, and the function of that is to reduce water loss. All right, moving on to where we live is the temperate deciduous forest. In the big left-hand column, you need to put varying temperature and precipitation, okay? The adaptation is that column is trees lose their leaves, okay? And the function is so they can conserve energy, uh, reduce moisture loss, and also prevent 
tissue damage. If the leaf stayed on there, they have water in them, and if it became a hard freeze, that's going to um, cause some tissue damage. So that is another reason that we often don't hear the reason why our leaves in this area um, fall off during the fall. Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about the desert. In the left-hand column, you need to put that the desert is hot days. Well, let's start with this. It's dry, hot days, and cold nights. Moving on for the adaptations, um, and I want to get a pen here and write. But this one has a plant that's found in the desert, okay? And you can put this in the first, but I want you to look at it when I'm referring to it. It has long tape roots, okay? You can see how that goes deep, deep into the ground, and we're talking like 20 to 30 feet deep, all right? And the reason why they do that, this is the adaptation, but then in the next column to the right of that, the reason why they do that is so that they can reach the water table underground. So if the roots go deep enough, they're eventually going to hit water even in the desert. Okay, so that's the reason why they have those. Okay, the next picture over here that you see is like the cactus. It has long horizontal roots as you can see the picture. And the reason why it does that, and they're just below the surface. So they don't go very deep, okay? So that is the adaptation. And then on the right-hand side of that adaptation, the reason why they do that is so that they can cover large surface area to collect rainwater when it actually does rain, okay? The very little rain that they get. Okay. Next here, uh, this adaptation goes in the adaptation column, is spines. And the function of the spines is to reduce water loss, okay, unlike leaves that we actually have here. All right, the next picture we have, this is a jackrabbit. All right, and this jackrabbit has what? Large ears, very large ears, okay? And you can actually see in our jackrabbit, you can actually see blood vessels running through. Let me get a pen here so I can point these out. If you see those these lines, right there's a line. I'm pointing at it, okay? And here's another line on our jackrabbit, okay? Those are actually blood vessels running through that jackrabbit's ears. And the reason why that jackrabbit um, has those big ears, okay, is so that Air can cool the blood. Air cools the blood as it circulates through those ears. Okay, so this is actually an adaptation of a jackrabbit found in the desert. All right, the next one. Some of you, your parents may actually have some of these at home. I think they call them. Some of them are called like chicken and hens. Those kind of flowers, but those are actually found in the deserts. They are succulents, which means they store water in the roots. Um, or the stem, or the fruit. Okay? All right, so that is an adaptation. And then the last uh, function here we need to put is so that they have water during the dry period. When there is no rain, they've actually got that water stored up. All right, so if you have Mrs. Brules, I want you to put a star in the upper right-hand corner, and if you have Mrs. Gunner, put a heart in the upper right-hand corner. All right, underneath, uh, the next one we're going to talk about is the taiga. Now, I didn't put coniferous forest, so in the box to the left, I also want you to write coniferous forest. All right, so in the box to the left, uh, under the taiga, you need to know that it has snow, uh, excuse me, cold, snowy winter, and quick, mild summer. All right. So the adaptation that we see here, um, and I'm sure I'm not saying this correctly, but is an E-R-M-I-N-E, -E, ermine. I hope I'm saying that right. But what happens is this little guy goes from brown fur to white fur, okay, during the winter months and that quick uh, summer month. And the function of that, as you can see here, is when everything is melted, he's brown and he blends in. And over here, when it snows, uh, he gets in his white fur. 
Okay, and we should know that that is camouflage. Okay, all right. The next one here is under the adaptation. You need to draw a what a Christmas tree looks like, okay, and write tree shape. Believe it or not, coniferous trees have a purpose in having that shape, and that adaptation is to shed snow. Not show, snow, sorry, to shed snow. All right, moving on. The next adaptation we see here is that evergreens keep their needles. Now, when evergreens keep their needles, that is the adaptation. The function of that adaptation is to conserve energy and also to, because, believe it or not, but leave, uh, trees that lose their leaves and then they have to reproduce new leaves or grow new leaves, okay, that actually takes a lot of energy. So by evergreens keeping them, then they're able to conserve energy. Also, it limits their water loss. Because a broadleaf tree has a much greater surface area to le uh, lose water. Uh, needles, not so much. They're very thin. All right. Next, we have the tropical rainforest. Underneath the left column, under where it says tropical rain, you need to know that it's hot and rainy. Okay. And also, it's the most diverse. All right. Now, I just picked out for your adaptation this time. This is the toucan. Make sure I spell that right. T-O-U-C-A-N, toucan. And we're looking at his bill, the toucan's bill. Now, the adaptation with his bill and the function of it, if you look at it, is so that he can reach fruit on branches because it's long, okay? He can reach fruit on branches that are too small to support his weight or his body size, okay? So he has this specialized bill that allows him to do, do that, okay? So there's one example of an adaptation in the tropical rainforest. Okay. Now, I want you to write your last name in the bottom right-hand corner of this sheet. Write your last name in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, we're on to our last one, and that is grassland. Underneath grassland, I want you to write that there's limited rain, okay? Then next... Uh, this is called a baobab tree, and there's not very many trees in the grassland. As you learned, it's just mainly small shrubs and grass, but um, there is an, you remember science, there's always that a set, a, excuse me, exception. So this is a baobab tree, all right, and if you notice the trunk is really huge, it's because it stores water in the trunk. Okay, so that is its adaptation. And the function of it storing water in its trunk is so that it will have water uh, when it is dry, which it stays dry there the majority of the time. So when it does rain, that trunk sucks up, sucks up all and holds all of that water. All right, the last picture here we have is, notice this grass is what color? Grass turns brown, okay? The function of the grass turning brown, that's an adaptation, is that it temporarily stops photosynthesis. And the reason why it does that is to conserve water because the process of photosynthesis requires the use of water. Okay, so this is just a highlight of some uh, structural adaptations. This is standard 5.2.